This video is split up into two parts. The first five minutes or so is how to install and set up Simon. The next seven minutes is an excerpt from my book, The Libertarian Dictator. I will be using one of Simon's female voices named Kara. In this video, I am going to show you how to install and set up Simon, a free open source text to speech app. Simon uses Microsoft Cognitive Service Speech API, and it is the best free text to speech app I have found. Microsoft gives you 500,000 characters free per month. You must create a free Microsoft Azure account, and you also have to create an Azure resource group and speech service resource. The README file lists the same setup instructions as I show in this video. The first step is to download Simon from github.com slash datajuggler slash Simon. There is an install version available on the right-hand side of the page. Click on Releases and scroll down until you see a .msi file. At the time of this recording, the latest version is 1.1.0. Download simon.msi and run the installation file. Now I will show you how to set up a free Microsoft Azure account. Visit portal.azure.com and log in with a Microsoft account. Click on Create a Resource and in the search box type in Text to Speech. Select the top option Text to Speech. Next, Check the box Azure Resources Only, and this will narrow down your search results to only Microsoft's text-to-speech. Click on the Speech box. Speech should be selected under Plan, and then click the Create button. Select your subscription name. Mine is called Pay As You Go. Under Resource Group, click the New button. Give your resource group a name. Mine is called Data Juggler Resources. Next, you will need to select a region. Mine is Central US because I am in Texas. Now give your speech resource a name. Mine is called Data Juggler Speech. And finally, select the pricing tier. I use the free tier, but if you need more than 500,000 characters per month, select the standard tier. I believe this costs $16 per every million characters. Then click on Review and Create. The final step is to set your environment variables so Simon can read your access key and region. If it isn't already open, open your speech resource listed under All Resources. Click on Manage Keys. This will list two API keys and your region. In Windows search box, type in Edit the System Environment Variables. In the box that opens, click the Environment Variables button. Under the System Variables at the bottom, click the New button. I already have them, so I am double-clicking on my existing variables. This brings up the same screen I am showing you here. In the Name box, type in Speech Key, all one word. Paste in your key you copied from Azure. And then hit the OK button. Click the New button again. This time, type in Speech Region, all one word. Paste in your region copied from Azure and hit the OK button again. This completes the setup of Simon. Now I will give you a quick tour of Simon. Double click on the Simon shortcut on your desktop. There are two filter buttons at the top, one for gender and another for country. Select a voice and enter the text to speech. Make sure you have an output folder selected before clicking the speak button. There is an emotion filter at the bottom. I will warn you, not all emotions. Work with all voices. One of my favorite emotions is whispering. Hello, my name is Davis. If you think Simon is worth the price of free, please leave a star on GitHub and subscribe to my YouTube channel. There is also an emotion degree text box. The value entered must be between point zero one and 2. A low value will not have much effect at all, where a value of 2 will intensify the emotion. I am going to finish this video with an excerpt from my book, The Libertarian Dictator. The title of this story is called First Impressions. The owner of a gas station finishes ringing up a customer and he has white hair and he must be at least in his 60s. 
Thank you, he says after he hands the customer their change and you can tell that he has a little bit of a Middle Eastern accent. His real name is Gustavo, but the name tag on his shirt says Gus. Gus has been in the US for over 20 years and he speaks with near-perfect English. Gus looked out the window and saw the same bum cutting across his property as he does every afternoon about four. He walked over to Thomas and said, I don't want you walking through here anymore, you are scaring my customers. Do you understand me? He asked Thomas with authority. Yes sir. I'm sorry, Thomas said, but he had no choice but to finish his walk to the sidewalk to get off of his property. Thomas knew his appearance is scary to most people. At 330 pounds, black and homeless he sees the fear in most people's eyes as he walks by, although he is as gentle as a house cat. His feet hurt, but he has no choice but to keep pushing his basket. Each morning Thomas Bastrop reads the newspaper to find garage sales or estate sales and he maps out the most efficient route to reach as many as his tired feet will carry him to. Thomas also has a few businesses that do not mind him taking some of their pieces of scrap metal as it saves them on disposal costs. Every afternoon he walks all around the neighborhood. Thomas used to be an accountant for a vending machine company until his mother needed a surgery and the cost was over $140,000. Medicare had denied her because of her age, and she was given only three months to live. Rita Bastrop had a clogged valve in her heart and without surgery a stroke or even death was eminent. Thomas wrote a check on the vending machine company's account to pay for his mother's surgery. After an audit discovered the charge, Thomas pled guilty to felony theft. At his sentencing he showed the judge the 181 applications for assistance he had filed and the rejection letters that accompanied each application. Some companies didn't bother to respond at all so there were not quite as many rejection letters as there were applications. When Mrs. Bastrop testified that she was alive two years later because of what he had done, you couldn't find a dry eye in the courtroom. Even the prosecutor had to step out for a short recess so she could wipe her eyes. I know what my boy did was wrong, but I have spent two Christmases with my grandbabies that I would not have seen if it were not for his actions. I don't have any money as I live off of my social security since my husband Thomas Sr. died but to me it's worth every penny in the world for me to see my grandchildren grow up. The judge gave Thomas probation, but his record made it impossible for him to get another bookkeeping job. Rita Bastrop lived five more years for a total of seven years and four months longer than the doctors had given her. One afternoon while out on his rounds Thomas found an elderly woman trying desperately to get her car started. He started to just keep walking, but he thought it would be the least he could do if see if she needed any help. If you want, I will take a look under the hood ma'am. Thomas offered. At first she seemed hesitant, but since it was raining and under the circumstances she didn't want to get out and walk, Thomas noticed the battery connections were corroded and pulled out a pair of pliers he keeps in his basket and cleared off as much of the corrosion and rust he could from the red and black connectors that protrude from each side of the battery. After a few minutes he told the woman to turn the key. The car gave a couple of revs and then started up. Your cables are just about rotted out, you should get them fixed as soon as possible, Thomas told her. Is there a garage around here? she asked him. Yes ma'am, make a right at the first light, he said as he pointed to an intersection about two blocks away. There is an Exxon station that has a garage about half a mile down. Thank you, and she then handed Thomas a $20 bill. I can't take this, and Thomas refused to accept it. Don't make me wrestle you to the ground, take it, the old woman said and with that, Thomas put the money in his pocket. When she arrived at the gas station the owner looked at her car and the out-of-state plates. He opened the hood and examined the worn battery cables. You are lucky you made it as far as you did, Gus told her. He explained it would take about 30 minutes to change out the cables so she went and sat down in the waiting room. When her car was ready Gus asked her, how did you find my shop, as his garage isn't on a major thoroughfare. She went on to tell him the story, it was the strangest thing. 
There was this man pushing a basket and at first I thought he was going to rob me or ask for spare change. Then he fixed my battery enough to get my car to start, but he told me it wouldn't last much longer and he gave me directions on how to get here. The next afternoon Gus noticed Thomas walking on the sidewalk on the other side of the street. Thomas now walks on the other side of the street to avoid Gus and his gas station as he doesn't want to cause any trouble. Gus walked across the street and stretched out his hand and said, I am sorry, my name is Gus. You are welcome to cut through my lot anytime you like. My name is Thomas, he said as he shook Gus's hand. You could tell the dignity that came with being treated like a human was something Thomas craved far more than the money he used to have. Thank you, Thomas said. Do you have any experience working on cars? Gus asked him. Yes sir. My father owned a garage so I was rebuilding carburetors before I was old enough to drive myself, Thomas answered. Thomas almost added the word legally, but he felt he was probably better off leaving legal matters for another day. Would you like a job? Gus asked him. Yes sir. Thank you, Thomas said excitedly. The next scene was only two short weeks later and already Thomas was feeling right at home in the garage. He didn't mind getting his hands dirty as it gave him a sense of satisfaction at the end of the day. Gus and the other mechanics were helping Thomas study for his certification exam that he is taking next month. The camera then switched to a view of the waiting room. Gus allowed Thomas to sell the sculptures that he made from the junk he had collected. There was a clown hanging in a hammock and another one featured men wearing sombreros and a third featured a clown playing a violin. There was also a bullfighter taunting a bull with his cape. The biggest sculpture was shaped like a merry-go-round and the horses would rise up and down as the sculpture spun around. The overhead lamp would cause each horse to glow as it traveled under the light.